Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another Premier Division show. Delighted to welcome JP on again. How's it going, JP? You well? Yeah, all good. Just checking the glasses. Good, sure good, good. good ish. We'll get into Derry in a while. But Monday, sorry, Monday's results. It might reference the games from before. So at Oriel Park in the Big Loud Derby, where there's always drama, incident, and uh, the lot of us had finished nil nil between Dundalk and Drotter. And to be honest with you, JP, I was at this one as well. And it was a tough watch it was a really really tough watch and you, you got that impression from Dundalk fans the Drotter fans uh, particularly Dundalk fans I think because Dundalk have gone four games at home this season JP without scoring a goal which is just it's sick for of. a home fan base isn't it they've nothing to cheer about there at all like <laughs> no just apart from the, the Drotter red card at the end um, yeah yeah um, exactly yeah I mean, I, by the I way, did, did you think that was a red card, by the way? There's, there's a bit of, some people think it's a professional foul, and other people think there's a level of nastiness in it. Where are you, you coming from there? Oh, I thought it was, as soon as I seen it, I thought it was a red card. Um, I think Paul McLaughlin got it right. Um, no intent to play, the, the one thing I'll say is there's no intent to play the ball, and I think he, he's forceful in, in how he um, mm. tackles him. It's not really um, a trip, is it? It's, it's like no, it's, it's a lunge. A trip, no, it's it's, yeah. more of a, I wouldn't even say it's a lunge either, Keith. I think it's just... Kick. It's a kick. It's it's a kick, and there's no intent to play the ball. So I think if you're criticizing Paul McLaughlin for sending him off there, I think you've just you're just uh, finding a reason to blame the referee. Because I, I don't think. think that... Would you be happy if a Derry player had done that? I wouldn't be quite happy if a Pats. Oh well, no, no. Um, I'm yeah. always for players taking one for the team, but never at the expense of endangering. Hey, if you pulled his shirt or something, or even yeah. clipped him, a yeah. little clippy trip or something, yeah, then it's I, I think, yeah, I, I'm always one for players, take them on for the team they, yeah. they try and, but but never at the expense of um, endangering the, their opponent and, and maybe causing mm. uh, a serious injury. But um, just to, to touch on this, uh, we're on, we're after the first round of games now, near enough, and um, it's looking like these two teams are going to be the two. It's going to be fighting it out at the bottom. We we know at the start of the season we, we were trying to figure out um who would go where and etc and and who would be the two teams to be propping it up and it's looking very increasingly likely that it's going to be these two um she said Dundalk no goals at home this year uh I think Drogheda have only three points to their name um six points sorry six points yeah they've only one win themselves Drogheda um but yeah. I suppose in the game JP Drogheda looked at kind of better organized and uh were probably better in the first half without being brilliant I think Adam Foley the best chance of the game though yeah. Warren Davis cuts in from the left he probably should score if I'm honest he kind of isn't in a great position body wise but uh but Dundalk watching Dundalk like you know um in the flesh it's yeah. difficult. The second half did more of the ball and there was a bit more yeah. bite about them. I wouldn't argue yeah. generally with their attitude or application, if I'm honest with you. I was looking at that quite a bit, but they just struggled to create chances. And even when Heaney was sent off, there was there was nothing really there. And you're kind of going, you can see why these have scored two goals in seven games. Like it's a serious concern for them. They they almost uh, scored straight after. The, they almost scored from the free kick. Mm. Um, I think it was but a poor goalkeeper from the draw the goalkeeper. Yeah, Wogan gets cut out, like, if you like. But that, yeah. that's the, that was the only kind of opportunity they yeah. had, to be honest. And then I think there was one, wasn't it, the ball over the top, and Benson took it early. Um, mm. if, if that goes in, then mm. I, th I think Dundalk are kind of like, they, they, they need a result, a, a goal, just they, they, they go on off um, any old way. Mm. Um, Dodgy penalty yeah. or something. Yeah, dodgy. Yeah. Penalty or, or something like that, but um, yeah, uh, it's not looking good for either either side. Like we know it is early days, or whatever. But um, the worry I, I have for them, Doc JP, is the fact that they're not a club they're used to being in a dog fight, whereas draw the kind of are. Do you know what I mean? So there's yeah. a bit more, and it's more expected if if you like in terms of you know, as a club from the start of the season and that they've the lowest budget and all that kind of stuff. I do agree with you, though. I think it is looking like the two of them. Uh, but Galway, we'll talk about them later, but Galway and Waterford, like as the season goes on, they might get dragged into it as well, to be honest with you, as the season goes on, you know what I mean? But uh, I do agree with you. It was, it was just a very poor game. It's probably the worst loud derby I've ever seen. The atmosphere even, it wasn't the worst, but it was a bit flat. But then again, it's a one o'clock kickoff, isn't it? On a bank holiday mm -hmm. Monday. I think that plays yeah. into that a bit too. Surprised. Surprised for Derby to kick off at that time. Um, yeah. you just we know why, you know, the guards obviously uh, yeah. were, were influential. Yeah, well, 
when you put that in that the, the, the guards have, have mm-hmm. decided to have it at one o'clock and then that's fair enough. Um, because the other games all kicked off at five, and you thought maybe mm-hmm. three o'clock kickoff or something like that would have been would have, would have been more ideal. If you, the funny thing is, I know some people who thought, "Oh, brilliant! We're going to a double header, right? Great day of football." They went to Dundalk and they dropped it, and then they went to Shelburne and, De- and Derry, and they said, "It's two very poor games in terms of yeah, goal out ever, action and stuff like." <laughs> never decided to do that. Then um, <laughs> somebody was a. Uh, so somebody was in uh, looking down on them anyway. Oh, stop! Um, look, look for Dundalk. They they just need a, a win somewhere. Um, hopefully they don't get it in Friday night. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there was a many chances and the telecom points in the way of chances in court in terms of the highlights. Apart from the the two red cards, and I think Archie Davis was absolutely silly, um, yeah, especially and, in the last minute. Like, and and to be yeah. honest with you, he's been, I'd argue, the best player overall. He's a good player. Yeah, we we can all get frustrated at the referee giving mm. a foul against us or whatever. Mm. But when whenever you're on a yellow card and you pick the ball up and you, and you just put it up and put it about sixty feet under the air, it's, it's a second yellow card all day long. And now with a game on Friday, you know. And now he's going to miss the Derry game on Friday, mm-hmm. and as you say, he's one of the best players. He's he's one of the players who've been there last year. Need all the experience and quality that, that they can can get when they're 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 in that situation. And um, uh, he he's going to be a big loss for them on Friday night. But I just don't see where either these two teams are going to string runs together. They mm-hmm. maybe make us rethink that they're they're not going to be in the dog fight. Mm. Yeah, so we'll get it the other nil nil over and done with Talca Park, <laughs> Shelburne nil, Derry City nil, and uh, you were here, weren't you? You were at Talca Park, JP. You made the trip down. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think overall? Uh, I think overall Derry bossed the play in terms of possession, but when they got to the final third, they didn't really do much of it, and I mm. think I think what let us down in terms of. That was a lot of the time we got to the age of box and McJanet, who was playing as a left wing back yesterday, rather than a left back. Um, his his crossing was letting him down, and I, I think it's a case of if we had a Ben Doherty in there, um, Ben who is natural for 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 that. Sorry with him, by the way. Do you know when he's back or? I think he's got a hamstring injury, right. but I'm not sure. What extent it is? Yeah. Um. So, I think it was. Derry created a a lot of half chances. Well, not a lot of half chances, but they created some half chances that you're just hoping that maybe it, it falls nicely for for somebody. I think it uh it, it wasn't on the highlights reel, but there was one chance where Derry put the ball in the box and it it dropped the Mickey Duffy and he takes a touch. And he gets a strike away, but it's blocked. And you're thinking, mm-hmm. if he takes that first time, does he test Connor Cairns? No keeper uh, throughout the 90 minutes had to make a save, um, which, which tells you all you need to know. Um, Derry had a chance. Paul McMullen tried one, curled one the back post, but it was deflected wide. The, they spoke about the chance Duffy had them second half patch and had a free kick. It was probably further away than what it, what it actually appeared. Mm-hmm. Then there were... Again, this one wasn't on the, the highlights reel, but it was deep and they stopped his time and Derry put a ball over the top and it just bounced away from Danny Mullen and Connor Cairns flapped at it. And then McJanet pick, picked it up and I think Derry had two or three men in the box and Connor Cairns, is the, he's he's standing there trying to block it but and McJanet put it straight into his hands, um, which was a disappointing thing. And Look, I'm not going to criticise Cameron because he, he, that's his position. He's been asked to fill it, and he's doing it the best of his uh, best of his ability. But um, I think Derry, going off the back of the last two performances, mm-hmm. this was much, much better. Mm-hmm. Changes there was a change of system. I think when Derry had the ball, it was a, a three four three. When they didn't have the ball, they dropped on their back five. Um, with the the three four three meant that um. McJanet and Boyce became wingers, and then uh, Shane, Mark Conley, and Kieran Cole became the, the back three. Um, and I thought 
I thought both teams were were well organized in their their setup. Um, I was a wee bit disappointed in, in Shelburne. Um, to be what honest. do you think they'll make of um Duff? He said actually, to be honest, didn't he after the game that there was a bit of a bug going through the team? Like if if that's the case, well, then would you excuse that a bit? Yeah, if if that is the case, then yeah. you can excuse their performance a wee bit. But mm-hmm. at the same time, you you're coming up against a team that has had two bad results. Um, uh, and Going by social media, their their manager is under a lot of pressure mm-hmm. in terms of the the social media brigade. Um, so I think even with the bug on your side, you you're thinking, you know what? Can we get at them early? Mm-hmm. See how fragile they are. Um, but Shelburne never they never laid a glove on Derry. Mm-hmm. Um, Derry didn't really lay a glove on them either. But Derry was the team that was probably happy to get the draw out of it. Um, just to get that sort of Stop the the bad run of of results. Yeah, yeah, you're going to look at it and say it's was it four away games and and no one for Derry That's in the right. last season. Yeah, yeah, two seasons they've been the best team away from home. So, mm. so that is a, a a bit concerning from that point of view. What are your thoughts, JP, on who been playing because he's injured? Like you know, to be honest, he is injured. Was, was there evidence of that in the game? Do you think? Yeah, because I don't think he was moving as as well as we can, as well as he can, as well as. We have seen him play over the, mm. the the course of the season so far. Um, but what he he, he did do a lot of hold up play. He did he did bring a, a lot of uh, good stuff. Mm. He, some of the chances that I talked about in the first half came came through his play. Um, I think Derry had a free kick from out wide, and he he won the flick on the boys, and the defender deflected it over. Or the referee had given a goal kick, but um, it, it should have been a a, a corner. Um, so uh, even though he was probably be playing him on leg, he, he did so he did um br- bring something to the table. And then when he went off at half time, which look if he's injured, get get him fit and then get him back. Because um, you'd but, be afraid, you'd be afraid you'd aggravate the injury, and make it worse yeah. if he's there for two months. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not yeah, good that, to the either, is it? It's it's not. No, you, you can't because you seen when he went off. Then that the second half we we weren't. We, we we didn't cause as much of a threat mm. as we, we did in the first half and um only until the, like the and the stoppage time then but um yeah uh if, if he's if he's in with two games now I think it's Dundalk and Drada. Mm. If there's any way that you if there's any two games that you're you're looking for that maybe you could do without him, it's probably them two games but Derry are Although he'd that... relish the chance to play against Dundalk now there, I think. <laughs> yeah, but Derry is a team that, that needs a result as well. Yeah. So there's always that in the back of your mind that you're you're going to involve him at some stage. Um especially maybe against Dundalk. But yeah, look Shelburne, I thought I was I thought really disappointed in mm. in them, but if there was a bug in the camp then then that explains why they, they weren't going after Derry they were maybe trying to and also JP to be honest with you I think they would have known deep down that you know a draw keeps them eight points out of Derry City you know and as as it turns out they're eight points clear at the top of the table as well after the eight games you know yeah but what I will say is the try and there's a lot of negativity going around about uh and set in terms of Derry is Friday night finishes us in the first quarter so if we can reset ourselves back to zero yeah. and go for the next nine and see, look, we, we've 12 points after eight. Mm. If we won on Friday night, that'll be 15 after nine. Mm. Re- reset yourselves for the next nine and see how many points you can get after that. And then evaluate your season then at that stage, because then you're essentially the halfway stage of the season. Mm. So try, try and beat your first. Try and beat your total. first nine. And, if you know what I mean. And look, if yeah. it's, if, if it's still, it's still no improvement you're still eight points behind mm. Wh- whatever um look the one thing and i'm not trying to be disrespectful to shelburne here but as a Derry city fan i'd rather be eight points behind shelburne and eight points behind shamrock rovers mm. and i think and anyone not... I, everyone would know that though even shelburne fans if you're eight points behind shamrock rovers i don't care who you are forget about yeah. it yeah I, i'm not being disrespectful to, yeah. to shelburne or anything like that before they maybe jump on <laughs> jump down my throat but 
at this stage of the season with eight games gone, I'd rather be eight points behind them than eight points behind yeah. Shamrock Rovers, you know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I say going to Shelburne and winning would have obviously reduced that gap. But look, the main thing for Derry was they didn't that gap didn't increase. Um, mm. and I think that's you have to take that positive out of it and and just look now to the next two games and see if they can add a bit of quality to, to the play that they that they brought yesterday. They they talk apart because uh, look, they they are carrying injuries at the, at the minute. There's a lot of squad out, a lot of key players out. Just have to try and get through the next three, four matches and see how many we, we can get back over the next five, six weeks. Like Kieran Harkin came back just uh over the weekend. Um hopefully Colin Whelan's not too far away. And then you're looking at the likes of Sadu Diallo, Cameron Dummigan. Um, and then Ben Doherty is a uh, touched upon already. Can get them boys back into the the, the, the fold and, and, and keep everybody else fit. Yeah, Patrick Magalini's out as well. Um so the, there's him as well, but look, it's it's early. I think it's early days. At the minute they they be, they be panicking, and there there's a lot of football to be played, um, and well, let, let's see what happens uh, on Friday night. Yeah, in the next games we can talk about goals. Thank God, Finch Waterford FC won Shamrock Rovers two at the RSC. I think that's four games now without win for Waterford. Shamrock Rovers now have got three of the bouts. Uh, Dara Burns at 55, McCourton 64 and Lopez with a powerful header on 71 minutes and uh, yeah, it looks like Shamrock Rovers have got goal now, JP, three wins in a row they're now up to fourth, they're on 12 points uh, with a game in hand on obviously Shelburne as well but uh, that game in hand could be a big one because you know what I mean, that technically could bring them to five points but um, you know, they actually have the opportunity to close um, that slide on Derry don't have if you like, you know, but yeah, another good win uh, Dara Burns obviously moved there in loan and um, it looks like he's settling in, in well there now, isn't it? He scored a couple of goals, he's playing well and uh, yeah, it's a good, it's another good win for Rovers on the road, isn't it? Yeah, they were always going to click on the gear at some stage, mm-hmm. Keith, and, that, and that, that, that's what uh, teams had to be be, be wary of. Um, um, They've they done the same last year uh, and they, they eventually clicked on the gear. They went to Galway and they, they ground out a, a 1-0 one one and that's exactly what what you need to do when, when you're under pressure is, is go to a tough venue and, and just get the one and get out of there. And They went then, they beat Bulls comfortably, they, Waterford put it up to them, but um, they, they, they got over the line again. Um, but I think Waterford will be, be disappointed in the, the two goals that they conceded. Um, especially the first one I think the first one was just it was a quick, it was a quick piece I think great bit of play from overs mm. the um, a nice but a quick free kick it caught Waterford off guard mm. and Dara Burns Sam he seems to have, have kicked on since his mm. his uh, goal against Derry and his goal and assist against Derry that earned him a, a man of match performance um, it was a really good finish around the keeper and, mm. and tapped at home and Waterford Fair play them. They they came back at Rovers and won a free kick in the edge of box and the strike from the court takes a, a deflection and ends up in the back and end. It was quite ironic because Shamrock Rovers had what they call the the draft excluder underneath, but there was a wee bit of a height on the the strike from the court and it, it clipped somebody's leg and went down the bottom corner. See, what so happened was it was Dan Cleary, but like what happened was Dan Cleary turns to the side and any time yeah. he turns to the side, there's a good chance it'll clip off and they can go in. But if you yeah. stay straight. Yeah, it, it doesn't clip it. off you. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he sh- he shouldn't have turned to the side. Like basically, no, no, definitely not. Especially when you've got somebody underneath the wall, they they protect that that idea that McCourt was trying. Mm. But look, Rovers, like they always do, they they, they don't uh, they don't feel sorry for themselves. They they get going again, and seven minutes later they were back up front again. I think Waterford will be disappointed because they had a few chances. They they clear it and they didn't. Yeah. Then they didn't stop across and and Lopez. Mm. He may. He, you think it was just? I thought. I actually thought it was because I didn't see who had scored the goals. It was the on. desire, wasn't it, to get yeah, that super header? I actually thought it was maybe Aaron Green or something. The way he, the desire. Well, Green actually missed a chance earlier. He should have scored with his head. To yeah. be honest with you, the desire that he, he used yeah. to get across the his man, and it was an absolute bullet of a header, and yeah. a, a great goal for for him. And look, Rovers are clicking in the gear now. I think did they go to? As I know, they play Pats, but is it at Richmond or is it? Hello. But Richmond, yeah, Richmond. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, that'll be uh, a, a tough game for them. 
but one that they they will relish and and some parts will be we're going to talk about them now in a minute as well but they, they'll be delighted they've got the win themselves mm. they 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 tee them up going in the that uh sham mcgrover's game and it'll give them a, a, a bit of confidence as well but yeah as you say they're eight points behind shelburne with a game in hand mm. but look over the course of the next we know matches i would expect that gap they become a lot smaller um, I suppose um, from Waterford's point of view, JP as well. Obviously, in the back of two home defeats in a row, one to Sligo Rovers, one to Shamrock Rovers. Now, but uh, you know they are they're eight in the league in eight points. They're only two points out of dropping it. Who do have a game in hand as well? And uh, you know, I know some Waterford fans can go, get upset sometimes when you when you kind of uh, when we predict them to not win or something. But uh, should there, are their expectations a little bit high maybe at the moment? I mean, surely if I'm if I'm a fan of any football club who's come into the into the Premier Division from the first, my first thing is look if we can stay in the division, anything else is a bonus. And I know they're full time club, I get that as our Galway, but surely staying in the division has to be the the main um, objective really for them, no matter what happens. Like, yeah, I, I think you have to learn to walk before you can run, mm. and. Basically, I think if Waterford fans are look, the, we're not going to knock them for being ambitious of, of wanting the, the challenge no. the, the the top four, you know, get under the top four. But it, it's it's very difficult they they do that, especially um a, as a promoted team. Um, look, Shelburne didn't do it straight away. They they came in, Duff consolidated them. They got their cup final. They built well last year. Other teams uh, like Cork have come up, a big club like Cork has come up and gone yeah, straight back down, you know? Right back down, yeah, mm. because the, the foundation goes in there. And mm. um, I think that's what Waterford should be. I'm sure in house, they're probably looking at, look, let's just yeah. finish eighth yeah. and, and build from there. Where yeah. I'm not, if the fans think that they're going to come in and uh, and, and challenge the, the top four, look, they, they've probably looked at it as so, well, you know what? Outside of, at the start of the season, you're probably thinking, you know what, outside of Derry and mm. uh, uh, and Shamrock Rovers, th- there's a, a place there to be got. And the fact that it had a good start in the first yeah. the first four games, let's say, yeah. the, and I a good win against may, Pats, for example, like, you know, yeah. so. I think that may have um, increased their expectations because they'd made that start. Uh, and now that start has sort of mm. tailed off a wee bit. And mm. It's over the next win a week's now where you're going to have to just fight for 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 results and I think as well JP to be honest a couple of injuries and their their squad is a little bit weak as well like Barry yeah. Bagley was missing there and he he's a very influential in midfield you know what I mean and the gaps are probably a bit bigger than some some of the other clubs in terms of who comes in next you know yeah but we we, we said that at the start of the season Keith the Waterford squad was probably mm. the weakest of um the, the ten or mm. Aside from Dundalk, because we didn't know yeah. what the squad was yeah. going to be like, but yeah. we, we did say that um, Waterford was probably going to be the weakest of the lot. Um, Galway's probably man for man wasn't as good, but they have Valley Horgan and uh, and John Caulfield, who are two men have been in the first division. They know what they're doing, mm. uh, and they know how they they make them difficult to beat. Keith Long, he's long lost Alan Reynolds, so he has to try and find somebody else. I don't know if he already has, but th- there's that de facto in now as well that. that they they have to just stick together the next few weeks and and not get overly disappointed no. because you've lost three one. Not get as I say, you can be disappointed because you've lost, but don't be overly disappointed because you've lost two one to Shamrock Grovers. If you've they, they lost two one to Shamrock Grovers and they played well, um mm. by looking at the highlights. Mm. Um so they have to take that positive from it. If they can apply the same against another team they they, they might come away with, with a point or, or three points like they, they they beat some pats and um and then they came to Derry and they they, they look like a team that mm. did a big win just, and dropped it as well you know so they they, they but they when they came to Derry they looked like a team that was just throwing the gower that night um where they'd beaten um Drogheda and they'd beaten pats especially the pats result mm. um but you you said that, that that was more to do with pats on the night rather than Waterford, but yeah, the Pat probably would have Pats have been poor enough this year, as we know, and that was arguably their worst performance of the lot, to be honest. But you have to give yeah. Waterford credit as well because you still yeah. have to go out yeah. and take advantage, you know. But yeah. maybe they got carried away 
I don't, I don't know. Maybe they got I don't, I away. wouldn't say they haven't, they haven't had a that. win since that win, for example. Maybe they thought, oh, this is easier than we think. I don't know. I maybe. wouldn't say the, the players or the management team got carried away. I don't maybe. think Keith Long would get carried away. That's for no. sure. Yeah. I think it's more the, the expectation of things coming off the field rather than on the field. But, mm. um, yeah, look, I think Waterford will be okay in terms of, of staying in the division. I, I think they will be. But, um, I think they, they they just need to be happy with, with that for this year, especially given the size of their squad and, yeah. and and just stay up this year. Don't like look at Cork last year. Don't Come worry up. about it. <laughs> they 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 went they went straight back down. Yeah. Um. And and Waterford. Yeah, they're better they than that Cork side that went straight back down. I can tell you that. Like, yeah. You know, so, so yeah. They, they they do want that to be happening. They don't want to be going straight back down, and then they they set themselves back yeah. an hour two two or three years. So yeah. There's quite a lot of good players in that team and a lot of experienced players as well. Um, so they'll be okay, but just let them let them uh, consolidate themselves. Yeah, we'll get on to St. Pat's now. They had a 3 0 win at Richmond Park and Sly your overs. And uh, JP, from a Pat's point of view, for a bit Sly, I didn't see this coming at all. Um, you know, Pat's have been very poor this season overall. They haven't scored more than a goal in a game until now. They could have had five or six, arguably, in this match, if I'm honest with you, they were that good. But they just seemed to, everything seemed to, you said uh, Higgins changed a few things, and there were certainly things changed in this game. And Pat's, all all, all their lines, the defensive line, midfield line, tackling line, they were all closer together. They were all higher up the pitch. They pressed at times. At times, they sat, not sat back, but just sat away from the press. Um Keating up front actually had people swarming around them, um, people getting him beyond them, people getting close that he, he could link up with. Probably unlucky not to score in the day, but uh, didn't see it coming. Turn number two goals in 10 and 42. Mason Amelia um, with uh, a late one and 86, but the 3 0 scoreline didn't, didn't flatter Pats at all. It was um, a really, really good performance and one they're going to have to really build on now, to be honest, because there's no use coming out and performing. And, and playing to that style, actually, kind of playing that kind of, um, you know, structure or tactical system that they actually pl- played in the game. It doesn't mean you're going to win 3-0 every week or even win every week, but they need to keep that tempo up, I think. Um, I did say I didn't think Chris Forrester and Lennon as a double pivot would work together because Forrester is a bit of a free spirit. He's better high up the pitch. Now, they dropped Forrester for the game, played Bulger in there with Lennon, and it looked much better. And Bulger um, was actually outstanding. Some people gave him man in the match. But even when Forrester came on, Forrester was higher up the pitch and he looked happier. So maybe the penny has dropped a little bit here, JP, finally. Well, you you would hope so. Um you like you go back to, to what was successful for you rather than than trying to implement something that yeah, you like, but do it over time. Don't don't try and change it all at once. And um look, if they have changed back they um what worked. Um uh, uh, and it's it worked for them in this game. It'd be mm. interesting to see if they uh, take the same approach going into the Shamrock Rovers game on, on Friday night. Um, but how often are you going to drop uh, Chris Forrester to the bench? Is is my question. If you're that that they that he that he just get rested and and they they put some in his place and then bring him on. But he's your captain. He's your talisman. You. you you find somewhere they have him, and as Chris Forrester higher up the pits is, for me, is a he has to play up there. To be honest, um, that's the play higher up the pitch. I saw him in the Brandewell, and he he wasn't really in the game. Um, and playing deep, he, yeah, he was he was controlling, probably controlling. Also, I think DIP when he plays deep, you see, he, he, kind, he kind of moves away out of position a bit, and Lennon's left on his own. But with someone like Bulger, he's that type of player mentally with that he kind of stays disciplined in that position. Forrester isn't that player. So you're asking him to do a role that he doesn't he can't really do. Do you know what I mean? But as you say, he can impact the game higher up the pitch. There's a bit of magic about him. And um, he can create opportunities and probably score goals as well. But um Brandon Cavanaugh was actually really good in this game as well. Actually, it was a penalty incident. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if that wasn't given. <laughs> this was a bit of I'm not even going to mince my words with this, Keith. It was diabolical refereeing. It it was diabolical. I thought he'd uh, given it when I seen it live. He ran over and looked like the whistle was about. I said, "Oh, he's given it." That's why I'm calling it diabolical because he's seen it. You, you 
watching the replay as well of it in slow motion. There's nobody in his way. He's seen the incident. And then he's put his whistle to his mouth. And then he's got to the edge of the box. And he hasn't blown it. He hasn't given the penalty. Um, it's really, really poor refereeing. And um, I don't know who the, the referee observer was in that game. But I really hope they came down came down on him for it. Because that was... The, if you are if you don't think it's a penalty, then fair. If you're not going to give it, then don't put the whistle to your mouth. Give yourself time to think. But don't run up with your heart, with your whistle in your mouth as if you're going to give it. Why do you think he end. hasn't given it? Do you think he hasn't given it because it's 2-0? Do you think if it's 0-0 he gives it? I don't know, Keith. Mm. I don't know. Unless mm. he's maybe got word from his linesman to say, no, nah, it's not a foul or whatever. Mm. I don't know. Um, But I just thought it was really, really poor refereeing. Um, and, and that's being kind. Mm. As for Sligo Rovers, though... um. Probably the worst I've seen a play this season, but if I'm honest as well, it did have an awful lot to do how Pats played on the night too. But I think one of the instances in the game that was a killer it was later on the game. Pats were two up at the time, but Ed McGinty and Panacker had a collision. I think the game was stopped for ten minutes or something, and uh, Panacker went off. I think. The information I have any is broken ribs anyway. How many is broken? I don't know. I broke two ribs before and didn't have to be stretched off. So he's broken ribs. He's broken more than two. I can tell you that. So he's going to be out for a long time. He's a key player. And McGinty, the strange thing about McGinty was McGinty played on for 10 minutes after and apparently he was uh, dizzy and um, he couldn't see clearly. I don't know why he played on for 10 minutes, to be honest, which is that's dangerous to say the least, but potentially big losses. J.R. Wilson was missing for Sly on the night. And obviously power suspended. So you just wonder if Sligo miss a couple of those kind of players, will they derail a little bit, you'd wonder. Uh, on the night, as I say, they weren't good, but at the same time, Pats and Fairness didn't let them play well either, I have to say. But um, disappointing enough result for them, to be fair. Still second on the table, mind you, but disappointing result for them. Yeah, because they, they, they have been going well. Um, mm. and, and Pats, again, like Derry, they were a team under pressure that was needing a result. And and, and Pats got, got the win and... They they showed it with a with a bit of um with a bit of um uh, ambition swagger, as well. I suppose. Swagger. <laughs> we'll say uh, swagger, uh, will we? <laughs> um like your young Brandon Kavner, I really liked him when he was at Derry. Um you said he had a great game yesterday. He was playing and, and centrally I, though, JP. I think he's better centrally as a number ten to you than on the right. Yeah, I think his his, his best games for Derry was when yeah. he was he he usually played out wide, but whenever he tended to drift inside, it's when he he, he tended to make things happen. Yeah. But Sligo yeah. will be disappointed, especially the first two goals um, that they conceded because they're both from set pieces. Yes, especially the uh, the second one, I think, from Turner. Yeah. They they didn't deal with the the first one. They didn't deal with the ball at the back yeah. post, and then Turner's left alone. And yeah. Second one, I think the man's more interested in, in Turner than he is getting the ball. And oh, I hate that, by the way. When they they don't know where the ball is or the flight of the ball yeah. is or anything like that, and they're too busy looking at the player. At the end of and the day, you're trying to stop the football, not the player. If that makes sense, you know what I mean as well. And you're you're two 0 down going on the half time. It's yeah. just like you get a corner close to half. Can see the corner close to half time. You're like, let's just see this out and mm. get in a one 0 down and see what happens. But a two 0 the team talk changes, the the approach changes, everything changes. Yeah, they went two up front actually at half time, I must mention. Warwoo came on for Mata, but it didn't really change much, I'll be honest, from their point of yeah, view. Yeah, and that's probably the disappointing thing. And mm-hmm. as you said, like, um, they've missed a couple of players through injury and suspension, could potentially now miss McGinty and, and Pineacker. Again, we, we spoke about Waterford having a, a small squad um, and injuries sort of could maybe impact that and, and Sligo Sligo could be the same mm. uh, I think who did they play Friday a uh, Galway um, oh, on God. Friday at both, Saturday, actually, a, yeah. or Saturday sorry so that's yeah, a yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a derby mm. and, um, and and it's like as I know Galway came up the brand well last week and, and made it really difficult um, they they lost the Bulls last night but <laughs> John Coffey said it was their worst <laughs> performance of the season so they, they'll be looking they, they they put in a reaction in that game so yeah look Sligo will not I don't, I don't think they'll they'll dwell too much on that they, they'll look at the other six games that they played this season and say forget about this one let's put this one to the side and, and move on yeah. So Damon DC Park finished Galway United nil Bohemians 2 in the final game on Monday evening and um, 
Yeah, it was a very good result for Bowles, JP. Alan Reynolds getting his first uh, win in charge after the, the, I'd say the almost battering the Cottle Tal Stadium the second half anyway on uh, on Friday. And uh, it was important for him to get a win reasonably quickly, let's be honest about it. And they did do that. Uh, Mills, Jevin Mills in 21, Akin Tunde on 57 minutes. Interestingly, though, the two goals from Galway's point of view came from set pieces. They'll, of all the teams in the league, they'll be the most disappointed with that. And I know Reynolds um, gets a lot of kudos for work that he does in set pieces, but I don't really think he would have really had enough time to implement that. And you look at the second goal in particular from Akin Tunde, I think it's just terrible defending uh, from Galway, actually. Akin Tunde does well to finish it, but... Uh, Strange defending from Galway and uh, Mills, the first goal. It's a good header, actually. Very good header. Decent delivery as well by Dale Rooney. Good header by Mills. But um, Bowles played reasonably well in this game, to be fair. They did create chances. But Galway, as, as John Caulfield said himself, um, I think he said it was the worst performance he's seen in a long time or something around that anyway. So uh, he'll be disappointed with that. But at the same time, if you'd offer Galway, I think, three points, Derry away and even Bowles at home and get the three points. They would have taken that, I think, would they? Over the two games. Yeah, I think they would have. Um, they would have taken it the other way around, more so, maybe. Probably would have, I mean? They probably would have expected it the other way around. Exactly. Um, look, they, they came to Brandeville on, on Friday and, and they were really well organised and yeah. they, they restricted Derry and, and they, they really, really played Derry off the park. Um, I wouldn't say they played us off the park, but they, they, they had the better chances on the break. Um, I thought Aid Derby was, was excellent. Um, and then eventually had to be taken off because he, he'd done that much running, he'd run himself underground. Um, their keeper didn't have to make a save in the brand of wealth. Um, Brian Maher, I think, had it make three, and then one went, went past them as well. So <clears throat> they, they were excellent. Um, and I expected them to, to get a result against both on the back of that. John Caulfield has said um, that this was their, their worst performance of the season. Um, and I wonder probably... if JP is the fact that they put so much into Friday's game and they're not really used to Friday and Monday Premier Division football. Yeah, I, th- I think that's... I was just about to say that, Keith. That's, that's probably... A f- that's the factor of it. Um, Bowes, I think... I don't think anybody expected them to go to Tal and get anything, even with the new manager bounce. Um, but what they did do end was they, they gave their manager a reaction on, mm-hmm. on last night and they they, they, they won the game 2-0 and I've never seen any highlights of this game. But um James Akintunde was he was a, a player that was liked at there. He always he always came off the bench and times when you were needing a goal you come off the bench and and maybe get get you a late equalizer or a late winner and um he's uh he has a handful when he's on there and Rennie will know him because he was there under Rennie he won the won the cup with Derry while Reynolds was assistant manager so yeah um, a good win for Bowles and, and it's one that they, they'll want to use now as their platform um, they, they build upon yeah we often talk about the signings have come in late etc and um, a lot of them you're not too sure about or you mightn't really fancy them but one I think that I'll highlight is uh, that's done well and it was re- quite impressive I thought in this game was uh, Madison at right back um, it's his full debut I think he came on as a sub in one of the other matches but I, I was quite impressed with his energy levels at right back so obviously that's a plus for them particularly new signs but also McManus was back in the midfield uh, I think McDonald McManus James McManus that is of two now Brian McManus as well but I think James McManus uh, James Clark and McDonald, in my opinion, is their best midfield trio. So I know Buckley, but he's been injured a long time. But you know what I mean? For what they have at the moment, um, it's their best midfield trio. But interestingly, they, went, they still play Jaron Flores centre-back, which is interesting because that's two managers now playing him at centre-back. And they've quite a few centre-backs at the club, but they, they seem to be trusting him at centre-back still, which is interesting, isn't it? I suppose it's probably <clears throat> Alan Reynolds trying to find his feet. Yeah, uh, He's seen that Jordan played there under deck on the vine and mm-hmm. he's probably just putting them in there they they, they works out um his best team or mm-hmm. or who can who can play in, in, in that position and if Jordan Flores goes in there and continues to, to perform then why wouldn't you you put him in there until you get somebody that's more natural in there? Um the, he said there about the, the kid Luke Matheson. Um he at one stage he had a a, a high Reputation in England, 
um, when he, he got his moves to move the walls as a 16 year old mm. off the back of scoring at Old Trafford for Rochdale. Mm. Um, and I was quite surprised when I seen Bowles had signed him because he'd seen the, he seems to have fallen down the ladder a wee bit. Mm. Mm. Um, I think he's on loan now from Bolton, so yeah. Um, but maybe I think with Reynolds being involved with the FEA set up for the last few years, I'm sure he's probably aware of, of um look um because I'm sure he was probably involved in the thing mm. on under eight setups as well um but look for for Bowles they they just they they needed a one um they're not too far off the the lights of Sligo and only two points behind Derry after beating them as well so mm. they, they'll not be Galway I think will be disappointed but they won't be too disappointed because they have come out of the Easter weekend with with um with mm. with three points um as you said earlier probably expected it the other way around but th- they'll take three points either way they get them and I think the same thing applies to Galway in many ways that it does to Waterford doesn't it to be fair I mean you know just looking at some of the clubs in the table there you'd still expect like um obviously Shelburne, Sligo, Derry, Shamrock Rovers, Pats, Bowes you'd probably still expect all those clubs to finish ahead of Galway wouldn't you in reality yeah I think yeah um yeah probably I think- I think uh, speaking to a few Galway fans on, on Friday night after the game, and they seem to be a bit um, conservative in their expectations. I think they're um, a bit different to our fans. I think they're actually nearly, if we, even if we finish ninth and stay up, we'll take yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think it, I got that impression from yeah. them on on uh, Friday night. But what I also got from them was with the games that they have played this season, if they had had a striker. That they mm. could potentially have had a lot more points. That's um, it, JP. A lot of teams often say that, don't they? If, if we had yeah. a striker, you know that kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I haven't seen much of Galway apart from the, mm. the Derry game, and then when they were playing. But their TV. goals generally, JP, do come from all over the place. Even in the first division, there wasn't one striker that that got their goals. It was like Stephen Walsh was getting goals. He's not really a striker, striker. You know what I mean? But midfielders like Hurley and Borden and uh, defenders were scoring for them. Ed McCarthy. So they do have goals in their team, is the thing. Like you know what I mean? And and that's they, they they'll try and use that. Mm. They they maintain themselves in the Premier Division this year, mm. and then maybe look at. Um, Finding the next step, which is maybe they, they try and get a, a striker that mm. that could get them 10, 15 goals and then chip run around the rest of the team with, with the hour with the rest of the goals. But yeah, I think I think Demons and Waterford are kind of in the, the same situation. Um, that just try and consolidate themselves and and see where where next year can take them road and try and uh, look. If the season transpires and they they end up getting a European place or or one in the cup or something, then then, season. then fair fair dues and fair play to them. But I think um this moment in time, them two teams should be looking at just trying to get an a good a good foundation they they build upon and and that that's maintaining their their, their Premier Division status. Yeah. Brilliant, JP. Thanks for coming on. Guys at home, let us know what you think in the comments. Please subscribe and we'll talk to you later. Thank you.